So speaking of baptism, December 23rd, 1973, I was baptized. And that date's pretty important to me, December 23rd, because it's also the day that my wife and I got engaged. And then many years later, it's the day that my son was born. It's a really cool day for me. However, on my baptismal day, I had the honor and the privilege of wearing the, the beautiful baptismal gown. My sister had worn it a few years prior. My dad wore that same gown when he was an infant. My grandmother wore that same gown when she was an infant, and it was made by her mother. And I was the last person to wear that gown because during the baptism, I threw up all over it and destroyed it. <laughs> Baptism's pretty important, and we've been focusing on that right now, and I'd love to find out your baptismal story and maybe how you uh, were brought into the church. Remember, this is not the place that we get saved. The water does not save us. That's been, that's been done for us. Jesus has done that for us. We've been claimed in these waters. We are named in these waters, and now we're learning about these baptismal promises. And last week, Pastor Heather gave a great sermon about the, uh, being surrounded by all the people of God. One of the first promises in our liturgy is, what is it, Pastor Heather? Thank you, to live among God's <laughs> faithful people. And today we're going to be talking about to hear the word of God and to share in the Lord's Supper. Now, if you're like me, as soon as I hear that, I think immediately of hearing the word of God is like the, the lessons are read from the pulpit, and then there's a sermon that happens, and it's always amazing. You know, that's what I usually think of when I hear the Word of God. <laughs> Sharing in the Lord's Supper, I think about the, the table being just ordained with all kinds of beautiful, you know, uh, uh, clay pottery. And then we come forward and we all receive body and blood of Christ, right? That's what I think of when I think of the, of the Lord's Supper, sharing in the Lord's Supper. And, and that's not bad that that's what we think of by any stretch of the imagination. But I can just hear my father kind of checking that off of the baptismal promise list, thinking he did his job right because now I'm a pastor and every weekend I'm doing it three times, right? I'm hearing the word of God and I'm sharing in the Lord's Supper. But there's more to it than just that. And I think our lesson today tells us about that, this lesson from Genesis about Abram turning to Abraham. See, Abram was actually called by God earlier than this, and God told him, you're going to have a lot of kids, more than the stars in the sky. And Abram is like, I don't think that's going to happen, but okay, I guess I'll try and trust what you're saying, God. I'm listening to your word. But then Abram doesn't really trust this word. In fact, at one point in time, the person that he's supposed to have children with, he acts like she's his sister and tries to give her away to the Egyptians. And then another time, she tries to give another woman to Abram and actually does. It says, we can't have kids. Go ahead and have kids. Let's just see, what, let's see if this will work. Maybe we can have a shortcut here. Abram now has not able to have children, has, has this, this child named Ishmael by Hagar. And, and there's a great story in there too about that. But I want to focus on Abram real quick. God comes back to Abram in our lesson. And in, in today's lesson, what does he say? Um, uh, come before me. Um, let me make sure I get this word right. Blameless. Come before me blameless, says God. And so Abram now, no matter what he has done before, it's almost as if God is saying, here's a dose of grace, Abram. And I love it that this is happening in the Old Testament, because if you're like me, I never thought the Old Testament had any grace in it whatsoever. I thought it was just a lot of hardcore things that you're supposed to attend to. But here, Ab God is talking to Abram, saying, come before me blameless. Let's just forget about everything that's happened before, because I'm going to change your name because you're mine. You're mine. Your name was Abram. And by the way, Abram means father is exalted, which would make sense in the patriarchy of, of the Jewish customs and of the, of the Israelites. But now, your name is Abraham, which means father of a multitude. You have to own this name, Abraham. You're going to have a lot of children. There's, a lot, there's going to be generations after you. Kings will come from you. And Sarai is no longer Sarai, but Sarah. And from here on out, Abraham and Sarah begin to trust in this promise given to him. This promise that is just an extension of the promises beforehand in, in, the, in, in, the, in, the, in the covenant that God made in the flood and the covenant that God made in paradise, that God will be with God's people. 
and Abraham is going to continue this, and they do. They listen, and they have a child, and his name is Isaac, which means laughter, because they both laughed at the thought of actually having a kid in their old age. Trusting God and following in God's word is a difficult thing to do. It's one thing for us to sit and hear the word of God, right? We're listening to it right now, but if you don't do anything with it, what is it? Then it's just something that we hear. It's just something that we hear. Pa pastor Bill Brueggemann, the founding pastor of this congregation, used to say to people in the member class, and, and Ron, you correct me if I'm wrong, he would say, don't just take up space, right? Am I right? Okay, so that's Bill's words, by the way, okay? So, but don't just take up space. We don't just come here just to hear the word of God to make ourselves feel good. Because it's really good stuff that's in this Bible, and it teaches us great lessons. But if we hear this word of God, now we're called to trust this word of God and do something with it. And there comes the second half of our baptismal promise, to share in the Lord's Supper. It's one thing for us to come up here and to receive it and to take the body and to take the blood and take it into ourselves and go back to our seats and feel like, okay, I've done that. Now we've got to go grocery shopping and there's all these other things to do. We have just taken Christ into ourselves. We have become the body of Christ. We're not meant to just hold that within. We're meant to go out and share it with others. Hearing the word of God and sharing in the Lord's Supper are preparing us for some action items. Now we go out to do something with it. Well, what are we called to do? You need to come back next week because we're going to talk <laughs> about all of the action that's going to happen from here on out as we continue in our baptismal promises. When you take that bookmark with you today, look at it, and you'll see. You'll see some of the things that we are called to do. We're not just called to sit and be. We are called to do. So today we're going to hear the word of God, share in the Lord's Supper in a new way.